Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Silver Princess in Oz by Ruth Pondy Thompson. This is Oz book number 32. This is actually with Adam Nikolai because it's the Empty Grave Retrofit Edition. We'll come to that in a little bit. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Prepare to shed a few pounds in Headland and get all wrapped up in the boxwood with Randy and Kabumpo and a pair of marooned out of this world as Planetti and her fire-breathing steed Thun. Then dare yourself to prospect the dark minds of madness with Gludwig the Glubrious in Nikolai's 2012 short story Gludwig and the Red Hair. Note, this book contains minor content edits that were made to remove or change some distracting and very non oz words and phrases. The appendix details the changes and also contains the original unedited lines. We will get to that, as I say, later on. So, let's go through and check out some tabs. I will say I like the fact it is properly laid out with the nice illustrations and stuff. I've read a lot of these sort of public domain reprints lately to try and get through this series, and not all of them have been any good. This one was one of the better ones. If you've seen my Oz reviews before, you'll know that uh, I, it's like the puns and the jokes and the one-liners I enjoy the most. So, we have here Randy goes, Is being married anything like being a king? Oh, no. No, indeed. Quite the reverse. The eyes of the old duke who had once been married grew glazed and pensive. Once you are married, you will feel less like a king every day. It's a very classic marriage jokes, you know. So, uh, Kabumpo, the elephant, he all, him, basically him and Randy are both like bored of living life in like the royal court. And uh, Kabumpo gets a great exclamation. He goes, Bosh and bother skites. And again, another one of these little puns that I enjoy. So Kabumpo the elephant, he goes, I've invited myself to breakfast and they can like it or kabump it. Uh, and then the elephant gets an erection. Well, here, so here's what it says. Now thoroughly aroused, Kabumpo leapt this way and that and Randy, unmindful of his own danger, jumped up and tried to beat out the fire with his cloak. Considering they've made like these uh, changes throughout, these content changes, I feel like they should have maybe changed that line there. We do have some cool illustrations though, as you can see. And um, the Thunder Cult, basically they want to go through this wooden wall and the Thunder Cult is Planetti's horse that breeds fire and all of this. Um, and it goes, the Thunder Cult had burned as neat a hole in the boards as a cigarette burns in paper. And while the edges glowed a bit, they soon smouldered out, leaving a huge circular opening. And that just seems a little bit weird to me to have that in a children's book. Um, like I only know what it looks like when a cigarette burns paper because I used to smoke. And then they get... Uh, they get attacked by feathers. Well, it's a field full of feathers, like feathers just growing from the floor. And obviously feathers tickle you, don't they? It is, it is known. So uh, we get this little passage. What in Oz? What in Ix? What in Ev is the matter here? He panted, wobbling dizzily over to Thun. Feathers, sighed Planetti, clasping both arms round Kabumpo's trunk and beginning to pat and smooth its wrinkled surface. The feathers tickled you and you fell down, my poor Bumpo. Randy too was almost laughed to the death. What does death mean? Planetti looked up anxiously into his eyes. Great Grump, so that was it. Great Gillikin. I remember now, we were both nearly tickled to death and it was awful, awful. Not that Ozians ever do die, he explained hastily. But after all, we are not in Oz and anything might have happened. And what I'd like to know is how in ever we ever got out of those feathers. We get some soldiers carrying scimitars. And Randy says, uh, each man is carrying a scimitar over his shoulder, but that's perfectly all right. They're probably parading for our benefit. Mmm, sniffed Kabumpo. Sometimes things are not what they sim it are. That's exactly my kind of bad joke, that. Oh, and then they fall through a, a trap door and end up in like a cellar. <laughs> and this is one of my favourite lines, one of my favourite puns ever. So that was the downfall and this is debasement. As in, you know, when something's debased. It's just, it's just good punnage, good punnage. I'm on board with that kind of crappy pun. So we end up meeting a fisherman uh, on Nonagon Island and we learn why it's got that name. I am Bloff, my cat is Nina, and this is the Nonagon Island, announced the fisherman, frowning at the little wizard. Ah, nine-sided island. The red gin stretched his arms and hopped up and down to get the kinks out of his legs. And I see you have a nine-sided cottage and a cat with nine lives. Oh yeah, and then Randy is about to get stabbed and... Um, he just happens, we get this, Why Randy Spandy Jacker Dandy, you have two bottles of my best weapon turning elixir. How did you happen to have them? Those? Randy squinted down at the bottles in positive mystification. Oh, I must have picked them up in the cellar. Of course I did. I remember distinctly now. But it wasn't mentioned at the time, so it's just, you know, a classic deus ex machina. 
Uh, that's all I have from the main story. Then we have uh, Gludwig and the Red Hair, written, written, uh, written by Adam Nikolai. And that was terrible. I'm trying to show you here. I'm too close to the camera. Um, so that was just the pub publisher or whatever adding their own new short story to go along with it. And it just didn't feel like Oz, you know? It just didn't feel right. Uh, and then we have the appendix of content edits. Um, and it's basically lots of things being changed from the word black. So, for example, looks to me like all Jinnicky's blacks is changed to looks to me like Jinnicky's men. Um, so that's most of those. The only one that confused me um, is uh, Petrifying a Small Boot Boy was changed to Petrifying a Servant Polishing the Floor. Which is, you know, I don't, I don't know what was wrong with Boot Boy really. But yes, The Silver Princess in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. I'm not going to, I mean if I was uh, rating the Adam Nikolai short story it would be a 2. But I'm not going to factor that in. Overall again, it, these are all pretty much like 3.5 out of 5 fodder. Uh, it was alright, it was enjoyable enough. It wasn't mind blowing but I kind of wasn't expecting it to be. Um, and it kept me, kept me going on the bike machine at the gym. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Silver Princess in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.